Yeah, we are starting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this uh, brief uh, media engagement. Um, you will recall that uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly, as well as the House, appointed the independent panel to make an assessment. Uh, with regard to the commissioner of the gender commission. Uh, and uh, as we have indicated in our invitation, they have now concluded that task and they are today submitting uh, the report. Um, the panel is here and of course so is the acting speaker of the National Assembly as well as uh, the Secretary uh, to Parliament. And of course, I also welcome uh, the colleagues from the Legal Services Department, and of course, who have worked very closely with uh, the Secretary uh, to the National Assembly, Mr. Paso, who requires no introduction. So I'm going to ask the Secretary to Parliament uh, just to give some introductory remarks and uh, to outline uh, the process that have been followed in terms of uh, putting together uh, the panel and the work that they went through. Uh, thank you very much, uh, STP. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Uh, good day to all colleagues present here. And also, I'd like to extend my greetings to all the members of the media, those who are on the physical presence here, and also those who are in the in the online presence. I would also like to convey our deepest appreciation in the presence of the esteemed panel that we will be outlining its work in regard to the task that they have been mandated by Parliament of the Republic of South Africa to undertake. So it is my privilege today to host today's uh, handover ceremony, which indeed bears testimony to our unwavering commitment to upholding the principles of our constitution and the integrity of our democratic institutions. We gather here to witness the submission of a significant report by the esteemed independent panel appointed on the 5th of March, 2024. This panel was constituted following the motion presented by Ms. Figile Masiko, a member of parliament, to assess the allegations against Mr. Mbuiselo Bota, a commissioner of the Commission for Gender Equality. This was in accordance with the National Assembly Rule 129R, a critical procedural framework for maintaining the accountability of office bearers within our constitutional democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the distinguished members of this panel that will be handing over this report to the acting speaker of the National Assembly. The first uh, member I would like to introduce is the chairperson of the panel, Advocate William Rasinga Makare, a senior counsel 
a respected jurist and advocate of the High Court who has been instrumental in the establishment of the Pulukwane and Pumalanga Bars, serving as their inaugural chairperson. His experience across various judicial capacities has been invaluable to this process. The second member of the panel, I'm, I'm not sure whether chairperson, you can see the chairperson is sitting there um, uh, already on the, on, the, on, the, on the front stage. Yes, on, on your left. <laughs> the second member of this esteemed panel is Advocate Nokolo Mbangeni. Advocate uh, Mbangeni, as an advocate of the High Court of South Africa and also a member of the Cape Bar, Advocate Mbangeni's legal expertise has significantly contributed to the panel's work. Advocate Mbangeni is here in the, in the, in the, in the front row. The third esteemed member of the panel is Mr. Malcolm uh, Gisler. Uh, Mr. Gisler is an attorney of the High Court and an esteemed lecturer and academic. Mr. Gisler's insight has been essential in the thorough examination of the evidence that was necessary to, to establish uh, uh, the basis of the report. Tasked with a challenging mandate, this panel, uh, Mr. Gisla is also sitting here, my apology, I, I didn't um, point him out. So the three members are here, two are sitting here, as the program that I said, and the chairperson of the panel is sitting in front. So working uh, uh, jointly, they were tasked with a challenging mandate that required them to determine if there was prima facie evidence suggesting that Mr. Botta may have committed misconduct, was incapacitated, or was incompetent. Operating under the strict parameters, they were to assess the situation based solely on written and recorded information while providing Mr. Porter a reasonable opportunity to respond to the allegations. The panel has diligently executed its duties over the past 30 days, concluding their assessment on 5th April 2024. Specifically within the period that has been assigned, they concluded the task at hand and would like to commend them for their diligence that was displayed in undertaking what is evidently a not so easy task. Today they present their findings, which will be crucial in guiding the next steps of the National Assembly. On behalf of Parliament of the Republic of South Africa, I extend my deepest gratitude to the panel for their service, your dedication to justice and due process reinforces the trust placed in our institutions by the citizens of our country. On behalf of Parliament, we would like to sincerely thank you for your service and thank you very much, Program Director. Uh, thank you very much, uh, STP. Uh, at this point, I'm going to request uh, that uh, uh, to invite uh, the chairperson of the independent panel. Uh, to give us an overview of the assessment process as well as the procedure that they followed in terms of the rules of the National Assembly in this task, in the execution of this task. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mutapo. <clears throat> and also to the Secretary of Parliament, and thanks very much also um, to the Acting Speaker for giving us this opportunity as the independent panel that is appointed by the Speaker to carry out the task that we have uh, undertaken in terms of uh, the provisions of uh, 
the constitution that you find in section 194 of the constitution of the republic you will know that uh, in our constitution um, a provision has been made for the establishment of chapter 9 institutions and those institutions are required to be independent and only subject to the law and the constitution in the performance of their functions the procedure for the appointment of members in those institutions is provided for as well in the constitution and they must be persons of integrity or honesty and they must be fit and proper so that is uh, what the constitution requires of uh, persons that are appointed in these institutions who are appointed by the speaker to carry out the task as uh, the secretary has already pointed out in terms of the national assembly rules in particular rule 129r sets out the functions that are to be performed by a panel like the one that uh, um, carried this task our task uh, was one which is preliminary in nature preliminary in a sense that uh, all what we are required to do is to make an assessment as to whether there is a case to answer by a member of a section one i mean a member of a chapter nine institution who is found or is alleged to have stepped out of the bounds that are required to be adhered to by a member of a chapter nine institution a motion was um, submitted by a member of the national assembly Ms. masiko in relation to allegations that uh, one mr Buota, who is a member of the Gen commission for gender equality has committed acts of misconduct the motion tabled five charges of uh, misconduct stipulating that uh, those charges if established they fall within the perimeters of section 194 of the constitution because section 194 of the constitution requires that if the allegations are established that is there is evidence to substantiate the allegations there must be a process in the national assembly for the removal of that member and that process if carried in the national assembly will culminate in the president having to act accordingly by removing that member as a member of the commission or of a chapter nine institution such as the commission for gender equality the motion also um, in terms of the national assembly rules must be accompanied by supporting documentation or what we may call um, supporting evidence the speaker assesses or considers the motion purely to establish whether it is compliant it must be of course a substantive motion and if it is compliant then the speaker must appoint an independent panel to assess the motion and the supporting evidence so that is what culminated in our appointment when we were appointed we were given the motion with the supporting evidence and to act in accordance with the rules of the national assembly by conducting an assessment 
given that this is simply a preliminary exercise, it does not establish any guilt of any person, but simply is to assess the prima facie evidence if it exists. The rules of the National Assembly do not allow us at this stage as the independent panel to go beyond the evidence that is submitted in support of the allegation that a member has committed misconduct. And that's very important. So we cannot conduct oral hearings. We cannot interview people, including the person accused. But what the rules oblige us to do, and that is peremptory in nature, so we do not have a discretion on that part, is that that evidence which is presented to us by the speaker upon accepting the motion as compliant, we must present that evidence to the member who is accused, so to Mr. Bota in this instance, for him to make a written response or written representations. So basically what we say to him, we say that um, this is the task that we've been given so that we can make an assessment as to whether there is prima facie case against you. And here is a motion with the charges leveled against you. And here is the evidence. Can you make written representations to us as to whether do you agree or disagree. If you disagree, then you must state the reasons why you disagree. Once we receive the, rep the, the written representations from him, we must make an assessment of the evidence presented to us by the speaker in the form of the motion together with the representations made by him, uh, that is Mr. Bort. But we do have a discretion when we do that because the rules also allow us, um, if we are of the view that uh, the member of the National Assembly who submitted a motion wishes to supplement the motion or the evidence that is presented, or if in our view, we are of the view that uh, there should be further substantiation of the motion because in its current form, it may not be fair to require Mr. Border to respond. But that's a discretionary matter. And that's also another important aspect because we, look at that option only if it is necessary and if it is going to assist us in carrying out our task. So we did consider that as well, and that is what then should be made clear. What we considered was whether it is necessary for us to go back to Ms. Masiko and say that, do you want to supplement your evidence before we give Mr. Bota an opportunity to respond or whether we believe that there are other persons who may provide supplementation in that regard. But we decided not to exercise that discretion for one reason. The allegations against Mr. Bota are centered on an audio recording where it is alleged that uh, in a plenary meeting that was held by the members of the Commission for Gender Equality, the commissioners. He made certain utterances which were derogatory and defamatory against fellow commissioners. It was alleged that uh, those utterances were in violation of his constitutional duty as a member of the Commission for Gender Equality to uphold the Bill of Rights. 
and in particular to uphold rights such as the right to equality, right uh, to dignity, and so on. But what happened is that um, in, in the course of a meeting that was held by commissioners, uh, which seemed to have been hybrid in a sense that uh, others are present and others join online. Remember that this was uh, during the uh, COVID uh, then period, uh, uh, although at that time then it was no longer, we were no longer in full scale COVID environment, it was in July. Uh, 20, uh, then 20, uh, then 20 July 2021. But um, uh, you recall that um, the online and visual platform was still much actively used, you know, by institutions in order to ensure that they can still conduct their business uh, accordingly. So what happened is that uh, um, in the meeting, which was uh, hybrid than visual and physical. Um, during the break, um, then the recording continued to run and didn't stop. And Mr. Bota is overhead, then now talking without being aware that it's been recorded, uh, making all sorts of uh, <coughs> derogatory statements against his fellow commissioners. Um, uh, and it was uh, uh, largely... Um, Communicating in in Sosotho, South Sosotho, uh, but the ways are quite uh, are quite uh, then derogatory. So uh, so at an appropriate time when the report becomes available, then one will be able to see uh, the type of ways that uh, uh, were used. So so then the simple thing was um, whether indeed it is Mr. Bota who uttered those ways, and if he did. Uh, what is his explanation? Because he may he may very well have an explanation to them, and he may explain why he said what he said, or maybe I was joking, or, or or whatever. So, so Mr. Botta has uh, preempted our process, of course, because uh, he has known that there's going to be this process, and he appointed the lawyers or attorneys to represent him up front. By the time we got involved ourselves, we already knew that he had appointed attorneys to represent him and that all communication must be addressed to his attorneys, which we did. And um, But instead, then the attorneys decided that uh, um, uh, Mr. Bota will not be really... Um, responding as he was required. Uh, they wanted, uh, uh, you know, the panel to answer certain questions uh, before, before, he can, before he can respond. Um, and, but uh, in our view, that was entirely uh, not in accordance with uh, the nature of our panel because our panel simply makes a uh, you know, preliminary assessment. It's not a committee that is established by the National Assembly to conduct a full-scale inquiry where somebody can uh, uh, put questions and even dispute authenticity of documents, that, that and that. Um, so, so then the attorneys treated it as if it was that type of a committee. Um, so in the end, then Mr. Bota did not make written rep the representations to the panel. Uh, but the panel continued, as it is required in terms of the rules, to make an assessment and make a determination. We considered then the evidence, we listened to the audios, and we were satisfied that uh, uh, in the nature of uh, the uh, utterances made, a prima facie case does exist calling upon Mr. Bota to uh, answer um, uh, uh, before the before the committee to be established by the uh, National Assembly. So um, that is ultimately the finding that we made, and we recommended that uh, the matter be dealt with in terms of uh, the rules further that are provided for after the preliminary uh, independent panel makes such a finding uh, that the matter then be referred uh, to the National Assembly and for a committee to be established to deal with the matter further. So that is uh, what we uh, concluded. 
and hence then the Secretary has indicated that uh, we managed to undertake and fulfill this task within the 30-day period that, is, that was given to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, 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 photographer or photographers, uh, we will, I'm going to request that uh, the Chairperson hand over the report. <laughs> it, it needs to be recorded uh, as evidence. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Acting Speaker. The uh, demo lot Rialebo, and especially you, Mdula Stulo, of the panel, thank you very much for having uh, at least briefed the media. Uh, on this significant matter. But I thought I should point out that today, this occasion takes place on the 10th of April, the day on which we lost one of our most active participants in the process leading to the Constitution making, under whose clauses we are operating today. Chris Honey was killed. And so the significance of that reality is in our commitment and loyalty to the goals of having our country run properly with the people coming first in a law governed society that is democratic and people have recourse when wrongs have been committed against them. And, but it is also an important indicator of the relationships we as parliament have with the institutions that support democracy. The Commission for Gender Equality is a chapter nine institution, part of the forum of institutions that support democracy. <coughs> and therefore the integrity of its function, just as our own institution of parliament, uh, we have a responsibility in the oversight we do, in the accountability demands we make, in the responsibility to ensure that we fulfill those aims and objectives of managing our affairs with integrity, uh, uh, ethically all the time. And so when this matter finally is handled in parliament, it will be the exercise of that function of our responsibility. Uh, we think that uh, uh, having come wrapping up part of the process, the beginning of the process, to ensure a panel is put together that has completed its task in the given time required, that in the 49 days, if I'm correct, that are left, that we will be able to handle this matter and bring it to finality. Uh, or, or whatever else is left unfinished will be handled with, uh, on, in the process going forward. But we do expressly want to thank the panel under the leadership of Advocate Mukari for doing a splendid job. We really appreciate your input in helping us put together and that the committee that will be set up if the, if the assembly decides to do so will have enough to work with and to enable us to come to a conclusion that we can later announce. These are questions that are critical for us to do them on an ongoing basis. And whenever it happens, we do wish that we can communicate them appropriately and so on. The process from now on out is that uh, we have to communicate to members of parliament. This is they who uh, instructed us to undertake what we are reporting on. This is an important milestone. And so this evening, uh, uh, parliament still has the authority to function, whatever campaign is going on, that brings to an end our sixth term. This matter must be communicated today in the tablings that we do daily for the work of parliament so that members, wherever they are, 
thanks to technology, they'll be able to have access to this, to the brief uh, session we have had today, including the report itself that I've just received on behalf of Parliament. So thank you very much, Daddy. Uh, for the work that is very significant and it's important. The process of ensuring these institutions, ours, ours in the first place, Parliament, and the fourth sector, which is what I call what institution of sub data supporting democracy should be called, is crucial work in the interests of the people. So thank you very much. I think we've come to the end of this. Uh, the dim Lord, thank you very much. It's okay. I'm the program director. So Why well, it's like uh, <laughs> demanding to lead the program? <laughs> I agree with you. The <laughs> active speaker wants to to bring this to an end to conclude. <laughs> So I'm trying to assert my authority as the program director. <laughs> um, I'm going to, if there's any question from the members of the media, either on the virtual platform or uh, uh, physically, uh, this is the opportunity. And um, bearing in mind that uh, the members of the panel uh, are not going to engage with you uh, regarding the work that they have done, because uh, uh, as the acting speaker has said, this is a matter that is still going to be subjected to the processes of the National Assembly. Uh, so we never, it is not in the habit or practice to put them to the media to defend or to uh, say anything with regard to the report that, or the work that they've done. But the acting speaker and uh, the Secretary to Parliament are here uh, to respond to any questions regarding this matter. Ibra? Okay, all right. Any other uh, question? Okay, there's no any other question. So the acting speaker was correct to predict uh, that uh, this has come to an end. So I'm going to request colleagues to remove this uh, table so that we can have uh, the members of the panel uh, with uh, the acting speaker and the secretary to parliament. Uh, photo opportunity. I think we can just. Can, can we also remove this one uh, just to create space? Uh, who is. My name? Just to put it here. It's just to put it here. Thank you very much, uh, members of the panel, uh, speakers, executive parliament, members of the media. Thank you very much.